Talking about Bill Crystal and the movement. Yeah, I think Bill's, you know, Bill's a smart guy, but I, you know, I think he's making a mistake here because the, the, the choice is the choice. This is what we have. And you have to, even though most voters are not wild about either one of these candidates, one of them is going to be president of the United States. And so we know that Hillary will have the same approach that we've seen the last eight years. And if you want the best argument, I got two words for you. Okay. Supreme Court. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, this next president is going to make this decision. I made the decision, and my colleagues agree with it, that we're not going to let Barack Obama fill this vacancy on the way out the door. That the American people are going to speak first, and then we'll decide who they want to make this appointment. Now, a lot of it is, and this is kind of a backwards way of getting into what's in your book, about decisions. I know, and I want to talk about it in a second, one that you had to make back w a long time ago, um, back in 1964, which I thought was interesting in your book. But to finish up this conversation on the third party, uh, Crystal's mentioned, apparently, it's been reported, some guy, the guy named David French, mm -hmm. uh, a writer. Mm -hmm. No chance, sir? No chance. Doesn't even, I mean, why bother, I guess? Is that the, is yeah, that that's the point. point. I mean, we, we, we have a choice. And we have, whether we're excited about the choice or not, uh, we have to pick one of these candidates. Okay, I was surprised by a few things in your book. Um, one is that we, we didn't know a lot about you as a person. We didn't know, you, we know a lot about you as a public figure. You've been in the public eye for a long time. You've been in the Senate since 84. You've been the majority leader now the last few years in the Senate. So you are one of the more powerful politicians in the country. But it didn't seem like we knew a lot about you personally. So we could talk a little bit about that. But to just kind of tie everything we were talking about together, 1964, um, you were a big supporter of Barry Goldwater, which makes sense to a lot of people who have followed American politics yeah. that a conservative leader would have supported and been a big supporter of Barry Goldwater. But you didn't vote for him. I didn't. Um, in fact, I had invited him. I think he came for other reasons. But I was, as a student, uh, college Republican president, I had invited him to come to the University of Louisville. He did. I got to introduce him. So I was a very enthusiastic Goldwater supporter, but deeply, deeply disappointed in his decision to oppose the Civil Rights Bill of 1964. So I ended up casting a vote that I subsequently regretted. Mm -hmm. uh, against Goldwater and you for, voted for LBJ? I did, yeah, and I felt badly about it forever afterwards hmm. because the, most of what I liked about Goldwater <clears throat> was, was really important. But right. I thought it defined the Republican Party incorrectly. Hard to believe today, but a higher percentage of Republicans in the House and Senate voted for the Civil Rights Bill of 1964 than Democrats. Right. Every Dirksen, the Republican leader, was a leader in bringing that about. And so it defined my party as hostile uh, to a very significant uh, percentage of Americans who were in a very tough situation as a result of rampant segregation. Well, it's a long-lasting mark and a change, a lot of people say, the it Republican did. Party. And some are making comparisons, not directly, but just in the way that the party could change now with Donald Trump, that, the, that this could be another turning point for the Republican Party. Well, we'll see. I don't think Trump is going to change what Republicans believe in. We are America's right of center party. Um, it certainly doesn't change my view and most of my colleagues' view about what the country ought to do. But look, I'd rather have Donald Trump make the next Supreme Court appointment He's already put out a list of people, all of whom I thought would have been outstanding. Right. Um, I think he will have to operate within a right of center world and within the constraints of the Constitution and the other things that restrict all of our abilities to do exactly what we want to do. But so did, that, that, did that experience, that Goldwater experience, did that kind of shape or, or change the way you think about modern day politics and may, uh, maybe affect the way you're thinking about this race? Well, that was a unique issue. Yeah. I, mean, I don't see a particular issue this year that's as defining as, civil rights, as that right. was. Given the, given the original sin of America, the Civil War, and all of the things that we've gone through to deal with that mm -hmm. mistake that we made at the outset of our country, it was a defining moment, and I thought Goldwater was on the wrong side of history. 